Hello friends, welcome back to At Home with Holly. This is Holly and I'm so glad you're here. So I am getting ready to go on vacation. So that means it was time for the corn to come down. <laughs> so we had a windstorm that blew over the corn. So only half of it was really eligible to harvest and the other half didn't fully mature, but that's okay. We still got some. So I went ahead and cut down all the corn stalks and actually ran it over my lawnmower a little bit to chop it up and I added it to we actually set up a second geo bin composting system and I added all of it to the second one I love that we now have two geo bins composting for us that is awesome and then I also took the soil that was left over from harvesting the potatoes used that to top off the beds and then added some fresh bag soil on top as well well friends the corn has gone I added some more soil, garden soil, to this. Also the eggplants are gone, so you can actually see the celery. I added my one extra Roma that I had growing with Olivia's marigolds, and the artichoke is still going strong. So this bed is ready for fall planting. And of course, this bed has already been planted for fall. It's got uh, seven or eight Romas and then some golden, um, I'll have to look at the exact variety, but some yellow determinate tomatoes as well. Excited about fall gardening. First of all, don't worry my friends, I am already back in town and had a wonderful vacation by the time you guys are watching this, but you know we can't get ready to leave for vacation without doing some canning and processing. So I'm going ahead and get my water bath canner filled up and then I'm also getting my pressure canner filled up as well. So for pressure canning, we just have to fill it up to the first line of the three lines. So we're gonna go ahead and get this filled up We'll put it back on the canner and then we'll tell it what we need it to do. So you want to fill these up at least halfway before you get them warming up so that they will warm up too. Okay guys, so we are preparing to leave on for vacation. So before vacation, that means all the things that would have gone bad <laughs> from our garden, or that was sitting on my windowsill ripening or any of that stuff, all that stuff has to be put up and preserved so that our hard work doesn't go to waste. So we are going to be doing um, one, maybe two jars of crunchy pickles with the new pickle method. Um, we are going to be canning some, pressure canning some fire roasted tomatoes. We're gonna do them in the oven. So that we have them on hand because one of my favorite soups has fire roasted tomatoes in it um yeah so we're going to be doing pickles oh and then we've also got some um bell peppers that i'm going to be dicing up to get them in um in the freezer as well so that i can use them for salsa and soups and all the things when i get back okay so we have our brine that we made to that we saved in the fridge from the last batch of pickles that we did we have the cucumbers that i have been pulling out of the garden um, for the last, oh, well, I think that's yesterday's and today's. We have our tray to roast our um, all of our tomatoes. And then we have our peppers that could have stayed out there a little bit longer, but probably would have been bad by the time we got back. Um, we have our pressure canner getting ready to go. So I'm going to tell that we're going to pressure can tomatoes for 25 minutes. So we'll set that to 25 minutes and get everything warming up for us over there and then it, once it's warm it'll just sit and wait for us and we have our pickle station happening so i'm going to turn on this water and when it gets to 140 degrees we will add um, our however many jars of cucumbers we have ready to go So I start to try to get everything ready and so I pull out a new roll of parchment paper because I think oh I'm gonna roast these tomatoes for fire roasted tomatoes and I'm gonna need to put them on parchment paper. Friends, if you're going to roast something under a broiler, 
you do not want a parchment paper. <laughs> so I just want to make sure that you know that I know that that's a bad idea. And I do think to myself that it's not a really smart idea before I actually put them in the oven. But I wanted to let you know that if you're following at home or something, please do not use a broiler and parchment paper. It will burn. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting, I'm getting everything ready to go. One of the things about going away for vacation is I like to have um, not a big jumbly mess when I come back, right? I don't want to have like to do a whole bunch of stuff the first day or so that I get back. So I don't want to have a whole bunch of overripe tomatoes or mushy cucumbers, you know, all that stuff. So what I try to do is kind of get ahead of everything right before I leave. So normally I would not do a batch of pickles with one jar. I just, that would not do that, but I'm already going to be in the kitchen because I know I'm going to be roasting these tomatoes. So I decided to take the time to get it done. So you see here that I am actually filling up the jar and what I'm going to do is take some of our brine that we made before and I am going to actually microwave it instead of heating it up slowly over the stove. I'm just going to pop it in the microwave, get it like boiling hot and use that. So it doesn't always have to be a long drawn out process. This is one of those things that this is kind of how I work. This is how I work in the garden. This is how I, I run my life. If there are little little chunks of time where I can get something done and get ahead, that's what it's going to be. I'm not someone that um, spends, you know, eight hours a day in the garden or anything like that. I mean, there are days that I do that, you know, when I'm prepping garden beds, that might take all day. Or if I'm, you know, building a new garden bed or setting up a new area, maybe that takes all day. But generally speaking, I find it more enjoyable to just kind of squeeze in little chunks and get it done. So this is the night before I'm getting on an airplane and I've got laundry going. I've got my daughter sitting up on the other side of the island and she's talking to me while I'm doing this and I'm just trying to make it work. So I've got, you know, linens going. Um, I've already vacuumed, I've cleaned, I've done all the stuff. And the thing that is important to me because it's something that I'm passionate about is the food quality. So I didn't want all of this to go to waste. Now, could these tomatoes have ripened for another couple of days and been absolutely perfect to make for something else? Absolutely. But a really good way to use up not perfectly ripe tomatoes is to roast them. And I always wanted to have fire roasted tomatoes jarred on my shelf. So what we're doing today is getting it all done, making it work so that this mom comes home from vacation with not a pile <laughs> of things on her to-do list, but actually gets to enjoy um, and, you know, rest from vacation, which is a funny thing that we need. But am I the only one that needs like a day off after vacation? So <laughs> especially traveling with a child. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this time to chop, roast, can while we're cleaning, while Olivia's eating dinner, and while I snack a little bit too while we're eating. So come along with me, friend. We are going to make it all happen and have this yummy product on our shelf when we are done. Okay, so the brine is warm and ready and our pot is pretty much a temperature. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add the brine to this one lonely jar of pickles, but totally worth it. I'm gonna use our deep bubbler to make sure that there are no air, buck air <laughs> pockets, air bubbles. And then I'm going to get um, some white vinegar on a paper towel and I'm going to wipe down the rings, wipe down the edge, the lid, um, so that there are no sticky bits and it's a nice clean seal put our jar in the pot and then I'm going to raise up the temperature to 180 and I'm going to keep it there between 180 and 185 for 30 minutes and that's going to pasteurize the pickles. Okay guys, so we have our jars, um, empty jars in there. They are warm. The canner beeped at me and said, fill jars, but I'm not ready yet. <laughs> um, I chopped up all of the tomatoes that were almost ripe or ripe in my windowsill. And again, we are going to broil these. So I don't know what I was thinking. I put parchment paper down, but you can't broil with parchment paper because that is a fire <laughs> getting ready to happen. So um, I did warm up my brine, just a little bit of brine, and I put the pickles, almost pickles, I put the cucumbers in the pot and I'm watching the thermometer. And as soon as it gets to 180, I'm going to start messing with the flame and make sure that it stays between 180 and 185 for 30 minutes because that's what it needs to do to stay, to become pasteurized, but still be crunchy. Um, so I'm excited about those. So I am going to um, get these 
off of the parchment paper and onto two trays so that they can equally get a little yummy char bits on them. And then I am going to um, keep an eye on the thermometer and just keep going. So I'm going to make sure my daughter eats a little bit of dinner while we're doing this. And then I will probably come back and start chopping peppers while um, things are going. You know what? Maybe I don't need these. Oh, second pan. All right, new plan. These go in, and then I turn them halfway. I'm gonna start that on low broil and my racks are not in the right place. Keep an eye on that. Our thermometer is at 174, so I will be keeping an eye on that. And time to start chopping. So like I was saying before, this is me trying to help my future self by having all the projects kind of up to speed and almost ahead of schedule. Um, so that when I come home, I'm not like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna unpack and I gotta, you know, not like a frantic. I want it to be like relaxed and chill when I come home. So these peppers absolutely could have stayed um, on the plants and gotten all the way red. And maybe they would have been perfect when I get back, when I got back. But I don't know if you've ever tried to price out organic bell peppers from the grocery store, but they are crazy expensive. And I would rather keep them green, sweep, sweet and not rotten <laughs> and in my freezer then have them fully ripen to red and either rot or get eaten by a bug or something tragic while it's gone so i decided to go ahead and pull them chop them put them in the my favorite silicone um, freezer bags and have them ready to use in future recipes so my future self wasn't upset that i missed out on harvesting them okay so we are at 181 i am messing with the flame and we are just going to keep it slow and steady between 181 between 180 and 185 for 30 minutes and if it drops down then you have to start all over again we should probably set a timer um and we've got our maters roasting still no char yet so we're going to keep it going i'll check back okay guys Temperatures at 183. We have 22 minutes left. Amazon package just came. <laughs> so change of plans. Well, that change of plans. Addition to plans, we're going to get our vanilla started. I have been wanting to make my own vanilla um, and it's easy. So I got some vodka and some vanilla beans. They just came from Amazon. And then I have a new egg holder thing because I like the idea of the spiral thing how like the fresh one comes down every time um but my chicken's eggs are a little big and sometimes they fall off and this one is supposed to be the one for the big ones so um this one is supposed to be better and it comes with all the things to put it together which is like a screwdriver and some screws and i feel like we can do that but first i need to stir the maters because i saw some char was happening and that means we need to make sure it's getting evenly charred. So, oh yeah, it's looking good. Looking good. Okay, so let me move this so we don't melt plastic. So you can see that it's starting. 
so rude. You can see that it's starting to get some bits of char. We want that. These are fire roasted tomatoes. These aren't oven roasted tomatoes that you're going to make in a sauce. These are fire roasted tomatoes. They're the ones that you like specially buy at the grocery store and they have a really different flavor. Not different, like they're not a tomato, but different, yummy, and you want the, you want the charred bits. It's like grilling, okay? So I'm gonna get these mushed around and put them back in. If it doesn't yell at me, hopefully. Okay, that's going in there. We're still steady at 183. Um, I'm gonna wipe up a little bit and then I'm gonna go ahead and get this put together. Okay, so I definitely am someone that gets distracted. <laughs> and this package came in from Amazon and I was like, ooh, yeah, vanilla, I can totally have that already going and it'll be a week ahead by the time I get back. And then I saw the egg holders and I was like, yes, 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 I need these too. So I started using a little hand screwdriver and then I was like, this is, this is crazy. I need my impact driver. So I took about three minutes here to put these together um, with my impact driver and then my daughter was like, I wanna make the other one. So I gave it to her and you guys, it's so easy, even a seven year old can build it. So I'm excited, I'm excited to have these. You guys, this is so cute. There holds a dozen on each one and we did this one together and then Olivia is building the next two so that we can build on them. But so much more stable, so much better. I love this. Okay, and these things come off so you can just do like pick up a dozen at a time so you can always keep the oldest ones on top which is going to make it really nice so inside here we have 10 minutes left to go on our pickles we have um we're getting some nice char on there so we're going to do these vanilla beans real quick so i picked up some vodka you can do vodka you can do rum you can do whatever liquor you want to do most of the time people do it with vodka um but like i said you can do it with others so i ordered um, we're doing this as an experiment together, but I know that it works, so we'll figure it out. But this takes about, you can do it in the Instapot and get it started and do it in like a day, but I'm just going to go ahead and put these in here and it takes about six months. And then you can just keep, um, uh, taking those same beans and putting them in the next, um, thing of liquor that you're going to need. So there's grade A and grade B vanilla beans. I got the grade A. This is 25 and... This is organic and we're gonna put them in here. So I'm just gonna split them. I'm gonna grab a little knife, although my big knife is probably fine, but grab a little knife. We're gonna split them open, pop them in. Oh my gosh. Okay, my daughter loves vanilla, so you gotta smell these. Smell these. So good, right? So good. I know, <laughs> I know. Okay, so. We are just going to get them cut and put in. Ooh, I need to take the top off this. I'm not pouring that. Okay. Top off, put in. I don't actually know that I needed to cut these open, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna and we'll find out together if that was the wrong thing. Are you keeping an eye on the temperature for me, kiddo? Yeah. So when you're doing the crunchy pickles, it's really important. 182. Thank you. It's really important that it stays between 180 and 185. So this is why you just come up with things to do that day. And I don't usually do it for one jar. But we're going to be going for five days and those pickles will not be cucumbers i keep calling them pickles before they're cucumbers the cucumbers will not be crisp enough to still make into pickles and all my tomatoes would have been rotten in my window so let me double check on the maters oh yeah okay they will be good while we we're still at 182 we're just gonna get all these in. What's that funny? Yes, you can smell one more. It's different, right? It's like pure vanilla. 
So when you, in the inside of these are vanilla beans. So sometimes in recipes they ask for the vanilla beans so you cut one of these open and scrape them out. Mm, so good. You can smell them. Like vanilla bean ice cream that has the little brown flecks in it. Yeah, yeah. That's, inside. that's what the inside is. Okay. Yeah. They're really tiny though. Really tiny. You don't have to say okay. <laughs> well, that's a whole other thing. Ooh, I should have dumped out some of this vodka first. Hold on. We're gonna get that up. Yep, it's to the top. Do I like drinking vodka? It's all right. Do I drink that little cup? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll make oh, some. It's already yeah, I can probably make some kind of martini or something. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to keep. So, note to self when you're doing this pour out a little bit, make yourself a cocktail first. Well, maybe not make it first if you're cooking, but, you know, get it ready for when you're ready for your evening. Guys, this smells so good. Okay. So it is a mismatch. Ooh, 181. Gotta watch that. It is a mismatch. Mismatch? Hodgepodge? I'm not sure. It's a interesting smell going on in the kitchen between... The vanilla and the roasted tomato. <laughs> so that's oh, interesting. That yeah. So good. The vanilla bean on my hand. Okay. So I'm actually going to pour a little bit of that back in. I probably should have gotten a funnel. That is okay. Okay. So still enough for a cocktail in there. I'm going to. Put that back on there in case I want it. And then this just goes in my pantry for six months. Easy peasy. Let's take a look and see what's going on underneath there. Okay, guys, we're there. Look at those. A little bit of char. Oh, it's going to be so good. Okay, let's get these in the jars. Okay, you guys, we held steady at the temperature. So we're going to go ahead, turn it off because that is our timer. Now we're going to take out this lonely, <laughs> this lonely little jar and get him over there to cool. And then we're going to start working on the tomatoes. Okay. Let me start by saying you do not have to, if you are not comfortable, you don't have to pressure can and you don't have to, like you can pressure can or water bath tomatoes. Um, they're both safe. Um, tomatoes, I feel like there's been something going on where um, the acidity is different in tomatoes than it used to be. And so they're suggesting more and more that you pressure can. But I've water bathed tomatoes for a long time and they're totally safe. And I feel comfortable feeding my family. Make your own decisions on that. Um, but if you wanted to be extra, extra safe, you can pressure can. I like pressure canning because it's quicker. <laughs> And since I have an electric pressure canner, I don't have to babysit it and do all the things that a lot of the times you have to like think about with pressure canning. So anyway, so today we are going to pressure can, like I said, so we've got our pickles cooling. We chopped up our bell peppers. We started vanilla. Um, so I'm going to get our tray out of charred, oh yeah, charred tomatoes. I let them cool in the oven for just a few minutes a while. Olivia was finishing up dinner up on the island talking to me and she helped build the bottom too. So the way we're going to do these is we're going to put the oldest ones up here and then fill them going down. So you take from the top and you fill going down, if that makes sense. So the oldest ones will always get used up first and the newest ones will keep getting added. When this is empty, you take it off and put it at the bottom. So they're always being rotated. Um, I like the idea of making sure the oldest ones get used up first that's why I had the spiral one but anyway so for this our jars are in the canner right now we've got our fire roasted lovely tomatoes you need to add acidity to your tomatoes 
um, whether that's lemon juice, vinegar, or citric acid. If you do lemon juice, there's a slight difference in flavor, not super noticeable, but noticeable enough. I don't love that. So I'm gonna use citric acid today. Um, for every pint, you need a quarter of a teaspoon of citric acid, and I think you need like two tablespoons of lemon juice. So I, I want the flavor to be the fire roasted tomatoes. I don't want it to be lemon juice roasted tomatoes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the citric acid today, but make your own decision on what you want to do. I am going to add salt because salt brings out flavor. Um, if you're going to add salt to your canning stuff, make sure it's a canning salt, um, non-iodized. So I'm going to use Redmond's Real Salt. I have that here. I have my citric acid. I have lids, bands, funnel, maters. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm going to wash that. <laughs> Oh, you guys, when you're getting ready to go for vacation, I feel like everything that could happen will happen. Um, I went to go check in for my flight, and I had paid extra to make sure that my daughter and I were sitting together, obviously. And we were sitting together, but not in the seats that I chose. I had to fix all that. But we are on our way, and everything is going to be great got it all fixed we're gonna sit together so the thing I love about this digital canner, uh, pressure canner if I don't say this enough I love this thing I'm obsessed with it is like it did all the warming up and then they've just been sitting here waiting for me they stay the perfect temperature you don't have to worry about anything like that um, and they're just ready for you so I'm going to get all these jars out. I don't know if we're going to need all of these jars, but I have four ready. I'm guessing we'll need like two or three. Um, there is a minimum amount that you need to do to run the canner. So if we don't fill up enough of these jars, we'll just fill one with water and can it as the, as the extra one in there. So you can put the citric acid and salt at the bottom. I know I'm going to at least have two jars, so I'll start with that so a quarter of a teaspoon of citric acid just to make sure everything's staying safe and then we're going to do i'm going to do half a teaspoon of salt you can eyeball see that's why we measure this in first you can eyeball it is what i was going to say don't be like me y'all okay that might have been extra <laughs> okay now what we're going to do is we're going to get these lovely tomatoes. I'm going to put the lid on this because with how it's been going today, I probably would have spilled that. Okay, so we are going to get these jars filled. And I'm so excited to have these. They smell good, although right now mostly what I'm smelling is vanilla. Not gonna lie. <laughs> okay, so this is like a raw pack, I guess, even though it's not a hot pack. Anyway, we're gonna fill these up. We're gonna do a half inch of headspace. So we're gonna get these in here. I think it's gonna look so pretty with the little charred bits and the different color tomatoes. I'm excited about having this. Actually, that could have just a little more, but we'll fill a few of the jars and figure out what we need. Okay, so do you guys talk to yourself like I do when you're in the kitchen? I'm so excited. We're going to make a recipe together that I use these tomatoes in. It's my favorite kind of soup. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my daughter's wondering if she can have gum, so she's holding up a piece of gum off camera. <laughs> okay, so all right, we got it. All right, let's get our next jar with citric acid and salt. All right, so quarter teaspoon of that. I was stoked that it made more than I th more than I thought it was going to. Guys, I'm serious. I'm dropping everything today. Um, 
-hmm. Okay, so got that going in there, and then the next one. So roasting your tomatoes, not necessarily fire roasting them, but roasting them is a great way to bring out the natural flavor in tomatoes. Um, a lot of the times you can do that before you make salsa. It tastes really good. Oh my gosh, are we going to get four jars, guys? The best day ever. Um, in fact, I think Jess over at Roots and Refuge, which is a great great YouTube channel and blog and website. She has a roasted tomato salsa recipe that looks really good. Um, roasting tomatoes, like I said, just a way to bring out the flavor. So another good, but this is going to be fire roasted, which is a little deeper, a little different. Guys, I think we're going to get three jars. I'm going to, I'm going to prep like we're going to get four jars, but I'm gonna stay positive. Okay, let's get these in here. Come on, buddy. Um, that may work out perfectly. Can you even stand it? So now I know. One busting at the seams tray of tomatoes. Of this tray makes four pint jars of roasted tomatoes. Which is awesome. Okay, so now we are going to debubble. Going to just kind of go around the edge with your plastic or wooden utensil. You don't want to do a metal utensil when you do this, like a knife, even though you may think, oh, that'll, that thin knife will get done around the edges. You don't want to do the knife because it can actually scratch the glass on the inside and ruin the integrity of your jar. And since we're going to be pressure canning and food safety and all that stuff, like you want your jars to hold up. So okay actually no we're not going to go to one half inch because we're pressure canning we're going to go to one inch headspace not half inch so if i said half inch earlier don't do that <laughs> when you're ahead when you're pressure canning you want to do almost without exception um read your recipe but almost that exception when doing pressure canning one inch is the word okay now we are going to get a vinegared paper towel or clean cloth. By the way, yes, all these paper towels get fed to my compost worms and they love them. So I do sometimes use dishcloths. Um, I'm not trying to make any extra laundry for myself today because I have all the bedding in the washer right now so that we can come home to clean beds and I don't want to do more loads. So paper towels it is since we're getting ready to leave. Okay, we've wiped down the rims. We're gonna put on our new uh, canning lids and our rings, finger tight. Then we're going to put them back in here and tell the machine to do its job, which is my favorite part. Oops. Okay, so then, oops, a little bit of water in the lid. Okay, so on the back of this pressure canner, there's a vent and a can. So you just want to make sure you're turning this knob to say vent because this is going to warm up 
and it's going to vent for 10 minutes and it'll count down on a timer. It'll do all of it for you. It adjusts the altitude. It adjusts pounds of pressure, all the things that you normally would have to like adjust and think about on pressure canning. It's going to do all of that for you. So um, we're going to make sure it's on vent so that the steam can come out. We're going to make sure this is locked um, so that kind of like an instant pot, the thing's going to come up and seal itself. Um, so we're going to, it told us to fill the jars. We're going to tell it, yeah, we did that. It's going to start heating it up. When it gets the temperature, like I said, it'll vent for 10 minutes and then it will automatically switch over to the pressure canning cycle. It will pressure can for 25 minutes and then it will naturally release its pressure. You don't open it. You don't do anything. You just leave it. <laughs> you just leave it. Once you get to the fill jars place, it's the set it and forget it. You just press the button. You've already told it how long to pressure can for um, and it's going to heat up, vent, pressure can, naturally vent again um and then it's going to release oh i apologize no you when it gets to the after it vents for 10 minutes it's going to beep at you and tell you to switch this knob to can when you do that that's going to allow it to seal so you don't have to do anything besides turn a knob um, so you press buttons and turn a knob which is way better than like what i used to think of when i thought of pressure canning i thought my thing was going to explode off the top and it was going to be scary and tomato sauce on my ceiling and all the horror stories so Love this pressure canner. I'm going to start cleaning up and get this kitchen ready to be done for the night. So I'll bring you back here when I take the jars out. Okay, friends, you know me. I like to clean as I go, even if I wasn't leaving for vacation. <laughs> but especially when I'm going to be leaving for vacation, I want to come back with all of this stuff done. So I am being extra careful to make sure I don't miss any spots, clean up all the things, make sure I load the dishwasher so that tonight before I go to bed, I can run the dishwasher, empty the dishes in the morning, and come back to just an ease and comfort on the day that we come back. So just like every other time i'm in the kitchen working i'm cleaning as i go in but today we're gonna make it extra clean <laughs> we're gonna make it extra clean so that like i said future me wants to have an easy breezy day for sure So this is beeping at us that says put regulator on which means to take this and turn it to can and then that will force this little thing to come up so we're going to tell it yep did that and now that is going to come up and it's going to can and then it'll take care of all the rest it just beeped at us and now it says cool so it's in the cooling mode i'll bring you back here when it's all done okay you guys one minute to go you probably hear or less than one minute to go really you probably hear my dryer going <laughs> in the background oh here we go and now it's done it's going to beep at us 10 times the little pin has already dropped so it is safe to open you don't want to open it until this thing says done then we have four jars ready to go of diced fire roasted tomatoes. So we're going to take these out. It's okay that they're still boiling just a little bit. Look at those little beautiful charred pieces. Beautiful. It's 
get these last two. Looking good. And last but not least. Okay, you guys, look at this. We got four jars of the Fire Rosa tomatoes. We got, let me leave that there. We got one jar done of our pickles. So much fun. Got laundry going. <laughs> the sink is clean. And all in all, a pretty productive day. Oh, and we built this together. So easy a seven year old can build it, and she did. Okay, guys, I'm also a hot and sweaty mess. <laughs> from trying to run around getting this stuff done. But don't forget, we also made this lovely vanilla together. Um, so I'm just so glad that you guys have been so supportive of me sharing this journey. And I wanna thank you guys for all the lovely comments and the likes. So um, keep liking, keep sharing, um, keep telling all your friends about this. We're gonna build this community together. Um, anyway, I'm excited that you guys are here. I'm excited to give you guys the next video and I will post this and um, talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much. I really appreciate you.